Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today is quite a special day for me and Glenn because today is our ninth wedding anniversary. Yeah, time flies so fast and we don't even <laughs> notice it's already been nine years. So so I posted this um, post in a group that I am in. It's called Foreign um, Married to a Filipina. And I've got a um, few people who responded. Thank you very much for your greetings. And thank you also for joining or commenting um, your question. Okay, so um, this first comment, I'm not gonna say his or her name, but this is the comment. Does your husband know the meaning of marry your girl, your Pinay girlfriend and you marry the family? Or does he have any issues of you sending money home. I don't mean any off offense on his side. These questions were asked to me by some people. I just want to know what is your thought about this. Um, please don't mention my name and I will respect that. Um, and thank you for the answers. God bless and keep safe. Happy anniversary to you both. Here's to more years to come. Um, thank you very much. So, I think before Glenn married me, he's probably researched it online, <laughs> um, like Filipino cultures. So, I think he has that idea in mind prior to our um, wedding. Um, so, yeah, but I think... Whatever they read online, they, you know, the foreigners, um, whatever they read online, sometimes it just sinks in when reality, and you know, when, re when reality sits in. Um, so if you will probably notice a lot of foreigners will kind of like culture shock, even if they read that online, when it happens, they still have that culture shock so I think that's where your second question came in about um, you know sending money back home so with Glenn um, we don't have joint account um, I think it was just something that just happened we didn't even talk about it so um, basically for for nine months I was on visitor visa here in New Zealand and I cannot work so, you know, all the money, all the expenses are coming from him. And um, at that, that time as well, he was building the house in the Philippines. So basically, he was sending money to the Philippines for a year because um, he was financing or building the house. But it wasn't um, shopping or for food for my family. So when I started working, I decided that... I'm going to send uh, money to the Philippines weekly. But one thing that Glenn and I sat down is um, we talked about not sending like 90% or 100% of my income back to the Philippines because we also have life to live. Um, so basically, I send my family back home the amount that we we both agreed and my you know, my parents, I know that my parents can just, you know, work out with that amount. And they're not dependent to the money that I'm sending, nor the money that my sister is sending. They also have their own source of income. So going back to the question, if Glenn has, um, you know, regarding sending money to the Philippines. No, he doesn't have issue about that one. Um, and the money that I send there is basically my money as well. So, yeah, and like what I said earlier we didn't have a joint account so whatever i do with my money he doesn't really you know it doesn't matter to him um but yeah but 
to me personally um i'm not going to to do what other or most filipino overseas um do that they send like you know 80 percent 90 percent of their their sahod their salary you know their wages i think that's just that's ridiculous because um you guys are you know we are all working overseas to earn money i know we are working hard for our family but if you are going to send a lot of money there you are just spoiling them and a lot of times they they will not appreciate the money that you're giving them because it's quite a lot like if you give them 10,000 pesos they probably will just say hmm 10,000 on 10,000 only you know but if you're giving them a small amount of money um, on a weekly basis because they are your parents. I'm not sending it to anyone else except my parents. Um, you know, they appreciate it because I'm not giving them a lot. I'm just giving them just enough. But just to... just it, It's not really the main source of income. So it's just something for them. Um, it's And that is something for me to give back to them. Um, you know, because the thing in the Philippines, the difficult part in the Philippines when it comes to money is having it having a money or income on a weekly basis because we know in the philippines they have monthly pay and well my parents are not working they are just they just have a um, coconut farm so that's like in a three months basis and you know so if i send them money weekly or oh, now it's fortnightly since my sister is in new zealand um yeah it just helps them more just to get you know get through the week for those um small bits and pieces that they have to um, purchase um thank you very much for your question and um for your greetings as well so i hope um i know that i rumbles too much i just i just wanted to be careful with what i said because i don't want to offend other people as well but yeah um my husband doesn't have problem with me sending money to the philippines as long as it is reasonable um reasonable um you know not over the top and i that i am also going to leave something for myself and for whatever investment or plans that i have okay the next thing the next comment on my post is do you get people who judge both of you husband as shallow person for marrying a younger beautiful filipina and wife for being a gold digger this happens to my wife and me in the u.s wondering if kiwis are more open-minded and understanding um yeah this is a very i mean this comment is um for me it's really sad that you know that you experience this um i'm very sorry about that um it's just you know sucks that people well they are the one who are shallow minded you know um here in new zealand personally i did not experience any of those but um you can't avoid you know you can't avoid out of 100 people there will always be one who will think something like that so i think when we first when we first you know got together um we lived together i'm pretty sure someone somewhere is thinking nah once she gets her permanent visa in new zealand she's just gonna leave him because she's only after the visa or you know stuff like that um i wouldn't i don't think um people who knows uh, people who know glenn would think that i am a gold digger <laughs> i have no i have no gold to dig um literally uh, and glenn and i grew together so it's not like he was um a rich 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 man that you know that people will think that I am gold digging him um, but yeah you're right some I don't know in New Zealand because I know that a lot of Kiwis are laid-back people they're open-minded and um, they're really good and I don't yeah I don't I did not experience it firsthand um, during the day that we were preparing our you know the, the venue and everything like that this lady um, 
she was just in there. I don't know what she was doing there. But anyway, she said to me, oh, you're, so you're getting married, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, I'm getting married, da, da, da. and you're, mar you're getting married to a foreigner. I said, yeah. And then she said, oh, you're excited to go to the to, to his country. And I said, um, yeah, you know, it's just part of life if I have to go there. That. And then she said, oh, yeah, you know, once you get there, you can just divorce him. And I said, why would I divorce him? And then she said, oh, you know, because you're already there. I said, no. I married the person because I wanted to have a partner and to have someone to be with. So what I'm going at is some people, they just have a different mentality. They are, um, some of them are less educated or less exposed that not all Filipinos or Filipina who are married to foreigners are just after money, you know? Um, but anyway, and then, you know, nine years, fast forward nine years, now we're, you know, we're here and we're still married. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so sorry to hear about those people who are judgmental. And you know what? They're just jealous. They're just jealous that you and your wife are happy and for me personally as a filipino i would rather see a filipina a younger filipina when i say younger i'm not talking about you know less than 18 years old when i say younger just you know not 30 or not 40 not 50 younger filipinas married to foreigners i would rather see them married to old older foreigners and be happy and have a good stable life and have a family rather than going for young, irresponsible Filipino guys. You see what I mean? It's rather, so I'm not saying all of the guys, Filipino guys, I'm just saying rather than those irresponsible ones. Um, so you guys just be happy. Don't care about those people. Whatever we do, people will always say something. But the important thing is you guys are happy um, and prove to them that she is, you know, she will, basically you don't have to prove yourself, but show to them that your relationship is genuine. It's not about money because you know what, money, you can find it by working, you can find it by making businesses, but real genuine happiness from a partner, that's something that, you know, money cannot buy. Right, um, I have another question here. I am an Australian. My wife has visited both Australia and New Zealand with me. She prefers New Zealand. She almost has her Australian permanent resident visa, but would prefer to live in New Zealand. Is that an easy transition from your experience since Kiwis and Aussies can travel between the two countries without restriction? Well, just... I think it was just um, yesterday that there, that the government, um, the Australian government is going to, I think they're going to stop the bubble with um, sharing the bubble with New Zealand because of that new cases, two cases. I, I'm not really listening to the news, but I just, I just kind of heard it. Okay, the transition for me, it wasn't bad because Glenn was uh, Glenn is with me. I think if I, I I came here by myself that that would probably be difficult. But um yeah. Um you know she, he drove me around the places and I also have my my in-laws here. Um the family tight the, the family orientation you know respect and that is there. Um, yeah, the transition for me wasn't that bad. Um, I haven't lived in other countries. So just based on experience, um, for me, I am blessed that I am here in New Zealand. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that the other countries are not you know, good because I haven't lived there. But for my experience, living here in New Zealand is really good. Um, I will, yeah, it's... It's difficult to um, describe it, but it's very relaxed. I think it's also um, probably, you know, safer than 
than most or other populated countries. Um, yeah, New Zealand is great. And look, if you are coming over in New Zealand, um, yeah, send me a message, and you know maybe we get we can catch up. I have um few Filipino friends here that I could you know um introduce your wife as well. But yeah, um, New Zealand is is great to live. Um, if but if you if your wife wanted um, like say for example like um, financial wise, well basically the rate fill the New Zealand rate versus Philippines um and then Australian rate versus Philippines um the money in Australia will have higher rate than New Zealand but um, I just just you know with the house saying it depends with what your status is but mm, for for many Kiwi people. Um, the housing here in New Zealand, it's quite expensive. Um, so, but I, yeah, I hope you guys can travel here <laughs> and then, you know, catch up. Thank you, man. Right. The next one. How often do you think I, uh, how often do you think it's good to go back to the Philippines to keep your wife from getting home, uh, too homesick? So when I came here in 2012, we went back to the Philippines one year after that. Uh, first off was, you know, to, for me to see my family. Um, it's kind of like the weaning uh, process. So you don't want to get to keep your, your wife away from her family for too long because it's just going to make her too homesick. So I think the first, the first time that she will be away, just kind of like, okay, we'll go there in the next year. You know, instead of five years, because that's kind of, that's just um, for me. If we went there five years after I came, it's so difficult. Homesick, um, the transition would probably be very difficult too. And then you go back to the country and everyone's, you know, a lot of family members have gone, you know, moved on and passed on, you know. So one year for me. Once a year, I think, is the best. Look, Glenn and I, we go back to the Philippines every year. In 2013, we went back there. I came here in 2012. 2013, we went back there. Um, we did not go back in 2014 because we decided um, that we are going to see some places in New Zealand. But 2015, we went there. And then 2016, we went there for six months. And then 17 December, 2018 December, and then 2019. Once a year, for me, is the best. Look, um, you know, I notice a lot of Filipinos will go back to the Philippines five years after. But I was just like, why? You know, especially if your parents are still alive. You wanted to, I wanted to see my parents at least once a year. I mean, what, how much is the... Um, flight, you know, if you have three, let's just say New Zealand dollars, 3,000 New Zealand dollars, that's 100,000 pesos-ish flight ticket, just, you know, you can work for that. Once a year, if you go back there and you have, you have work, go for it because the sad, the sad part of working or living overseas is that, you know, you, uh, you just go back to the Philippines just because one of your family members died or someone was sick and that's not how you wanted to see them you know go there while you can see your family don't spend money on something like you will buy a lot of pasalubong the gift nah that's the least thing that you wanted to think when you wanted to go to the philippines if you wanted to go back to the philippines your goal is to see your family and be with them Stop thinking about pasalubong. Or stop thinking about oh, we should go to this place or this resort or this and spend this money. This and that. No, main thing you should think is spend time with your family. Those other stuff that you're saying about going to the resort, it, just let it unfold. You know, um, because if you think about oh gosh, it will it will cost me hundred thousand pesos for my ticket. It will cost me um, thirty thousand for this. That's that's why a lot of Filipinos don't want to go back there because they think it's gonna be expensive, you know. Um, but Glenn and I we go there every year. The only people I give pasalubong to are my immediate family, parents, siblings, and you know my two nieces, and my fav my aunt my two aunties who who helped 
us, my family, um, through our tough time. And the pasalubong that I give them, it's not even expensive. It's you know, small things, but I put you know value to it because I you know I I always give it to them personally. You know, especially to my aunties. Uh, thank you very much in that. But yeah, when go to the Philippines once a year is not bad. Um, if you're worried about money, just think about the flight and the food that you're going to eat there. I mean, just. Yeah, it's just important to see your family, I think. Because, you know, we don't know when when our loved ones will be taken from us. Um, yeah, once a year. Um, and then, there's another comment, but it's not a question. Uh, my wife is a Filipina, and we live in Marikina, Philippines. We would like to say congratulations, and may your love for one another prosper and grow and grow more each day and to last a lifetime of happiness. My nephew is also married to a Filipina and they live in the US. Thank you very much for your greetings. I'm not sure if you wanted me to to say your name on my vlog, but um <laughs> better not, it's safer. Right. And congratulations from London, England. My Filipina wife is here with me three years now. Awesome. It feels um yeah being in a long distance relationship and compare it to you being together is a mass um, it has a massive difference and yeah if you're together i am really happy for you and especially this difficult times so this one here are you learning tagalog and or visayas and if you so you speak it with a kiwi accent so um i am my mother tongue is visaya but I don't speak a Kiwi accent. It's quite difficult because, you know, I am already old. My tongue's probably too tough to change. Um, some people are inclined and, you know, to learn accent, but I don't learn the Kiwi accent. But sometimes I, I say words and phrases um, with a little um, Kiwi accent, but not really. <laughs> From another person, congratulations and best wishes. Thank you. And then happy anniversary from... Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry guys. Um, I'm not going to mention your name just in case you don't want me to mention it. And then happy anniversary to you both and many more wonderful years to come. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, getting... Being married is... It's not really like a game, um, especially in the Philippines. There's no divorce there. So you're basically stuck unless you wanted to spend that money in, you know, annulment process. Um, people think that if you're married to a Westerner whose country has divorce, it's just like, oh yeah, it will be just easy. But I think if you, when, when you, marry someone don't think about that don't think about how easy it is to get out of this marriage once you know um once if the marriage doesn't work um, i think it's better if you think that we are going to make this work um well glenn and i are both singles um we weren't married prior to ours so and we only knew each other eight months and then we got married almost you know straight away and then we did not really have a long distance relationship for a long time because glenn likes traveling so in the span of eight months um he's visited the philippines three times and the third time was that's our wedding day and then after our wedding, just one month after that, and basically, or two months after that, basically he just, he went back to the Philippines and stayed there for three months to, you know, get my visa sorted. And then after three, after almost three months, we came back here. And then that's when we went back, the, you know, the year after. So, um, yeah, it, I can't, you know, I mean, marriage is not always... Um, happy and happy and happy because especially the first the first year that you are going to live together there's a lot of adjustment 
um, you know, <laughs> there are a lot of things that you didn't know that person um, can do or possess or whatever. Um, and then you realize that, oh, he does this. I don't want, because he's too messy. He, he leaves his um, dirty clothes on the, on the floor. But, um, you know, those things. And yeah, marriage for me, it is it is really um something that it's it takes to to tango that's, that's what i could say um if, and marriage is a give and take um if someone we will always have moments um i'm sure if you're watching this and you're married to a filipina you know what tampo means so yeah just when your girls are having their tampo moment yeah just let them <laughs> just let us just and then we just after our tampo moment we'll just like you know, get out from it or you can give them you can give your girls a hug a few moments later sorry guys um the video just cut off before anyway um i had my nap as as you all know if you're a foreigner and married to a filipino well we like sleeping and it's weekend here and it's Saturday. It's my wedding it's our wedding anniversary. But um Glenn is just watching the America's World Cup. So we are going out um maybe in two or three hours from now. We are going out to our favorite Japanese Japanese restaurant. Um yeah and <laughs> Thank you very much guys for watching and listening to my thoughts about you know, the questions before. Um, yeah, I hope you guys will, you know, comment more or comment on my video for for my future uploads. Um, at, at least I could get some ideas on, you know, what content do I make, um, yeah, because that's one thing that YouTuber really, especially a beginner YouTuber, really struggle. The content that, you know, the viewers will really view. But anyway, thank you very much, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, I think if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine with me. But if you wanted to comment, yeah, comment down below and, you know, whatever. And then let's try I, I will try to make us a, a video you know from the comments but, um yeah thank you if, if you get this far thank you bye